good afternoon friends so in the last lecture that we have seen about the work sampling the definition of work sampling the basic concept of the work sampling uh, what is the meaning of confidence level and uh, we have seen one example so you can refer that previous lecture so thoroughly you can be able to understand the further part of, part of this work sampling uh, lecture number 2 so in this case one more example we are going to take and i think i hope that you will understand these things and how that confidence level has been set how that number of uh, observations or we can say that size of the observations it has been calculated that you can be able to understand now you just note down the second example uh, of the work sampling now this is the example a work sampling investigation was conducted to estimate the time study for which the workers in plant remain ideal okay so this is the problem related to the the workers in the plant has remains in the ideal condition so we need to check how much percentage of the ideal condition and what how much is the uh, basic things has been set now the problem is a total of 720 observations were made about the workers in 45 observations the workers were found ideal if the confidence level is 95 percent then determine the absolute accuracy of the current estimate of the proportion of the time consumed by the idealness so here the main part is the idealness if if you are knowing in the previous part we have considered about the working time so again i have mentioned in the previous lecture also that either this term is related to the working condition or this term is related to the ideal condition so this problem is basically based on the ideal condition we need to consider all those ideal conditions and then we have to check about the parameters here we need to calculate the absolute accuracy that is the term of s into p now we are writing the given data from the problem the total number of observation that is n is 720 now we have to calculate the proportion of ideal time now the number of 45 observations so out of 720 observations the 40 in the 45 observation it is observed that the workers were ideal so remaining times they are in the working condition or they are doing some work so that term 45 upon 720 that we are getting the proportion of ideal time that is 0.0625 so here we need to uh, check the relative accuracy that is the absolute accuracy so absolute accuracy is the term of s into p so here the x it is for the 95 percent x is 2 or we are knowing this or we are already explained the x term in the previous lecture that is when the confidence level is 68 percent x will be that is 1 sigma then if the confidence level is 95 percent the x is 2 sigma that is 2 and when the confidence level is almost 98 or 99 percent the x is 3 sigma that is 3 so here again i am writing the formula s is equal to 2 into under root of 1 minus p upon p into n so here this term is s into p then the remaining terms i am putting over here now here i am getting that s is equal to 0.288 so that is 28.8 percent that is the relative accuracy now we need to calculate the absolute accuracy that is nothing but the s into p so s is 0.288 already we have calculated into p is 0.0625 so absolute accuracy we are getting plus minus 0.018 so this is the simple calculations that we need to do so the absolute accuracy for the given problem is 0.018 or if you will multiply this term by the 100 you will get the percentage that is 1 point normally 8 percent now first again uh, we will go to the basic procedure of work sampling so after solving these kind of the problems we should know which kind of the procedure that we have to follow so first of all it is very much important to define the objective 
or the purpose of the study clearly means what is the meaning of objective of or purpose of the study means whether we have to find out any operating activities means worker are doing some operations or that activities we want to highlight or we need to calculate the idle time so it is very much important to observe the operator either in the working or in the ideal condition so this is the first important step so after defining a clear objective the second step is that we have to design the chart for recording the information now what is the meaning of designing of the chart means if we want to do some observations for the working conditions then we have to note down which activity we want to highlight so in those particular charts those activity has to be mentioned or if we want to just highlight the working or ideal condition only two terms will be there in the chart that is the number of observations for the working conditions and the num number of observations for the worker remains ideal so only those things we have to note it but if we are highlighting some activities in those particular charts we have to mention about all those activities now after that make a pilot study that is the preliminary observations now you first understand this term pilot study means what so before carried out the exact experimentation or exact study we need to test something that is work sampling again i am highlighting that before going for the making the procedure means similarly when we are launching some new cars we are taking the crash test that is called as a pilot study of this particular or how much stresses has been absorbed by that particular car and all before launching that car on the road that some experimentation has to be done so similarly that some uh, study has to be carried out before starting the observations directly so that is the pilot study so we can be a, uh, the benefit of this particular pilot study is that we can be able to make some judgmental data so which is very much important so that judgment should be there so that's why that pilot study is the important part now next from the preliminary observations compute the delay percentage p means after making some pilot study what will be the probable this is again the judgmental again again i am saying that that judgmental percentage for the delay that we are getting through this now after carried out some exact experimentation might this data may vary but at least we can be able to make some preliminary judgment so the final data almost it will be a very closer to this pilot study now after this determine the accuracy and confidence level decide for the investigation so we have to just be ensure about how much percentage of the confidence level we have to maintain and in the pilot study if some problems may be there with the readings definitely before launching the work sampling technique we can be able to come to know about those problems and we may take some uh, remedial activities just to overcome over those problems so while carried out the exact sampling that observations we can we should not have face any kind of that problem so that's why that pilot study is also again the important parameter so which will be very much useful to maintain the accuracy in our work sampling method now next step is to obtain the approval of the foreman of the department or section head concerned in which the study is to be made now this approval is the very much important means we have to which kind of that work sampling just again i am uh, telling you the same thing work sampling where we are using this particular technique when the job is too much longer or when that activity is carried out is too much long, longer for any organization if it is very shorter activity the work sampling technique is not useful in those condition because it we are investing something on that work sampling method so uh, that suggestion has to be obtained some approval has to be obtained and then only it is useful to go with the work sampling method now after this calculate the number of observations required for chosen level of confidence and accuracy after that the calculation 
of number of observations so how much observations we have to carried out because word sampling it is a statistical sampling procedure we are knowing this so how much number of observation or observation size has to be maintained that is the very much important part in this so this is the that size has to be decided in this particular step so which is gives you this after deciding the size it can be able to possible to maintain the required level of accuracy if the number of observations are more the accuracy is more so but again the reverse manner the cost and time of the study will be increases so that statistically judgmental data we should have so we should we can be able to maintain the accuracy good accuracy with a reasonable amount of cost and with a less time so that's why that calculations are very much important in this step so after that uh, finalizing the observation size determine the number of observer needed so this is the practical again the condition after deciding the number of observations we have to decide the how much observers we need to carry out this particular activity and after finalizing those observers we have to instruct those peoples in what way we have to take the uh, some sort of the observations so this is the very much again the important step now after this to determine the number of days or shifts required for the study sometimes it took some longer time so we have to decide how many days we are required because it is just the readings are taken on the random basis so we sometimes we need to take some few days more or it may be finished in the some shifts also so after uh, doing all this then we have to plan the schedule of observations such as time for taking and the route to be followed by the observer so this is the again uh, we have after finalizing all those we have to make the plan for this and after this proceed with the sampling of observation in the chart so after starting with those real observations after making the pilot study we are going for the real observations and all those things we have to note down what the chart we have formed means in the second step what the chart we have formed over here this is the for the recording purpose so this in those particular chart we have to make all those observations so sometimes some unusual points may be also there that also we are we have to record on those particular chart so after taking all those observations the last step in this is to analyze the data and presenting the results so after making all those observations we have to in the last step we have to analyze all those data and then we have to present the results so the data is usually summarized at the end of the day so this provides the trend for the next day of work and gives the information regarding the precision that is the accuracy obtained in the study so far and how much more is required so whether we are maintaining the accuracy or not that is that has to be observed in every day so the application or the use of work sampling that has that is highlighted over here so what are the basically where that work sampling has to be applied or what is its usefulness that we will discuss in this part so work of the team has to be investigated or studied so the work sampling is used where the work of the team has to be investigated or has to be studied so there is clear distinct between the working time and ideal time so when we want to differentiate those terms that is working time and ideal time the work sampling technique or work sampling that part has to be used over there so to indicate the areas of delay so that is again the usefulness usefulness of of work sampling so we can be able to indicate the areas where the delays is occurred so delays may be occurred because of that some queue delay may be occurred because of that workers are taking the additional breaks or delays may be occurred because sometimes that proper job is not assigned properly and the machines are ideal because they are that on that particular machine 
there will not be any job so that area that has to be highlighted where the delay is occurring after that to investigate and to locate the areas area of under utilization now just see under utilization this concept i will again explain you in depth so utilization means sometimes the utilization of the resources are the very much important part as far as that industries are concerned now what are the various resources of the industries that we are knowing the resources in the industries are basically the machines the equipments and the men that workers we can say or laborers so these are the basic proper resources in in industry and the utilizations of all these resources are the very much important part as far as that industry is concerned so then and then only the productivity will be increased or that industry will be under some profit if the productivity is the higher that definitely the profit margin for that particular industry will be more so these utilizations should be proper so through the work sampling technique we can be able to highlight the resources those who are under utilized it means sometimes in the industry some hurried decisions may be taken and we are suppose we have taken some cnc machine the example i am just giving you and the cost of the we are knowing the cnc will be basically from 18 lakhs to the 25 lakhs and in a whole day suppose only for the half an hour or one hour the work is assigned by assigned to that particular machine so remaining for the 23 hours that machine is ideal so it is very much controversial situation for any industry because they have invested almost up to the 20 lakh in one machine and to operate the cnc again we have to appoint one skilled labor so again that labor may be ideal because he is only having the one hour work on that particular machine so this should not be a good scenario as far as that industry is concerned so this is the we have to we can be able to highlight through this work sampling technique so to establish the overall performance levels this work sampling technique will be gives you a, a good usefulness then to determine the machine utilization again the same example we have taken in uh, determining the distribution of the duties among a group of workers so sometimes we have to assign the duties to the workers and we have to make some groups also just to perform the activities and in the higher level also for to complete one project there are some sort of that project uh, groups has been formed so all those duties that has to be determined properly or we can be able to determine properly through the work sampling technique now in the study of nature causes extent of interference uh, with the effective accomplishment of the project so this is again the important parameter part uh, or usefulness of the work sampling then for the purpose of cost control and accounting so through the work sampling technique the proper utilizing of all those resources we can be able to curtail the cost or we can be able to control the cost and this is very much beneficial as per as that accounting section is concerned then to establish estimate the allowances for unavoidable delay so sometimes that unavoidable delay that we have seen in the last lecture that is due to some sort of that uh, power problem or some sort of that machine breakdowns that delay may be occurred so that allowance that we have to provide while doing some calculations so these are the some sort of that usefulness of the work sampling now we will see the advantage of the work sampling now work sampling it is very cheaper technique than the time study in the last part we have seen that that in case of the time study which we are required the more time as well as it is some sort of that costlier part so the work sampling this is the cheaper technique then only one analyst can perform the work sampling study of many activities so with the help of only one analyst we can be able to carry out the study for the many activities then observer do not required much training so here that much skilled training is not required to give to the worker only we have to tell about that particular chart we have to explain how it has to be uh, feel by that particular observer and during the pilot study itself 
we can be able to provide that basic training to that particular observer then it is more useful in non repetitive and indirect jobs then many observations or uh, sorry observe operations or activities which are impractical or costly to measure by the time study can readily be measured by the work sampling so where the time study method is not feasible there we can be able to go with this work sampling method then observation may be made over a period of days or weeks thus decreasing the changes of the day to day or week to week variations so the, those variations can be able to captured by the work sampling method because we are maintaining the data by day by day basis so which kind of that variation may be occurred in those days or in those weeks that again we can be able to highlight in this work through this work sampling method then observation are made at the random interval intervals over here so this is need not to be taken in on the continuous basis so that's why we can be able to make the proper plan for the work sampling technique the work sampling may be uninterpreted at any time without affecting these results so this is the random technique so that's why there should not be any interruption or sometimes it not be uh, it is not the continuous method so even so some sort of that interruption may be occurred we can be able to make some flexible plan for this so we can be able to change some planning in the work sampling technique then the study can be made with the pre assigned a degree of reliability so that reliability is more in the work sampling so again the less time the training it is required so already it has been highlighted so this is these are the some sort of the advantages of work sampling now again every method is having some limitations so we will see the limitations of the work sampling so compared to the time study the statistical approach of work sampling study is difficult to understand understood by the worker so definitely the work sampling technique is totally based on some sort of that formulation method so to to explain these things to the worker it is the difficult or challenging task because the time study it is the practical method so directly they can be able to understood those things but some sort of that formulation that may be create some sort of that difficulty to understand to the workers then the operator may not be understand the value of sample size and accuracy etc so how much is the sample size and all those things that cannot be able to adapted easily by the operator this is the challenging task in the work sampling then it is not the economical for the study of job for shortened duration or operators and machines so already i have explained this where the jobs of shortened duration or operators or machines that work sampling technique is not useful and the last is the worker may change his work pattern on the site of work sampling of the observer sometimes that workers are changing their pattern and that create some challenges in the work sampling so that again we need to take care of this uh, all those things in when we are using the work sampling technique so this is all about the work sampling technique and i hope you have understood those this term thoroughly and any kind of that difficulties or any kind of that uh, some queries are there you may put all those queries in the comment box so i can be able to explain all those things in the comment box itself so thank you very much i think I, you have enjoyed this lecture very nicely thank you very much